Gambia as a country has a critical human rights situation. And just like John Matthew said, where we are at the moment, the human rights situation in the Gambia has hit a level where the international community has to act. Now, what happens in the Gambia when the military take over in 1994, uh, overthrowing a democratically elected government in 1994, this very government that came into power that year had a crackdown on the media. Journalists were killed, imprisoned, tortured, because the government has gone to a point where they had censored a media outlet in that country. And today, as I speak to you, self-censorship of the media is what is being practiced in the Gambia. Journalists and media institutions cannot freely write anything without the government cracking down on them. A duel of the Gambian journalists was murdered in 2004 for criticizing the Gambia government. A colleague of mine who have worked with me in the same newspaper have just gone disappeared since 2006. And up to today, no one knows if this young man is alive. Our situation has gone to a level where, ladies and gentlemen, the Gambia government has terrorized every citizen. As I speak to you now, fear is what rules in that country. Freedom has become an illusion for most Gambians. And quite very recently, when we had this campaign for human rights in the Gambia, which has attracted the attention of the Gambia government, the Gambia's justice minister was on record last week threatening me personally and members of the Gambia campaign and describing us as enemies of the Gambian state and enemies of progress. And this is what he said, we will wait for them to come and we will prosecute them. The burden I must bear while the cruel scourge I fear in the lands of Virginia, Virginia, oh. and I think on friends most dear. The NUJ, obviously, as a union for journalists and media workers, um, supports freedom of speech. And so, naturally, it's important for us to support freedom of speech, not just in the UK, not just in Scotland, but also abroad in, in other countries. And particularly when freedom of speech impinges on members of our union, such as Alu, such as Charles Atangana, and other members of the NUJ who joined the union as asylum seekers. And we're very proud to be a trade union that, that accepts asylum seekers as members um, and because there's a lot of responsibilities come with that and I'll come on to that in a moment but when journalists are doing their job well they, they it's, it's part of their job to scrutinize those in power to ask them the difficult questions that ordinary people are not able to ask because they may not have a voice or be feel because they feel intimidated by those in power and yet those people in power are meant to be answerable to those ordinary people but journalists try their best to, to stick up for them and to ask those difficult questions of people in power, of those who have wealth, where that wealth came from, how they acquired it, how they're using it, are they using it for the benefit of their countrymen and women, and to, to scrutinise abuse where it happens, unjust imprisonment, unjust systems of, uh, of, of courts and police, and to examine corruption and to expose corruption wherever it happens. Now when people do that, and then they in turn are subject to abuse and to detention and to torture and to imprisonment without trial and in some cases to execution without trial. It's our job as journalists, just as it's the job of all of us as citizens, to stick up for those people and to, to express their 
and to express our condemnation of what's going on. <laughs> You know, when, when a government decides that it's okay for uh, the police force to uh, bury some undercover operatives uh, in the ranks of peaceful protesters and campaigners, I think that's wrong. But it does at least come to light because we have a free and assertive and critical media. When marginalised groups are further marginalised and stigmatised, whether on grounds of race or religion or sexuality, whether on grounds of their ethnic origin, their country of origin or their asylum status, their immigration status, when people like that are further marginalised, it is at least possible in this country for challenge to be brought to that, whether by campaigners working on the ground to support individuals and families or by the media. And there have been very, very powerful and inspiring examples of the media bringing challenge to the brutality of an asylum system which fails in the very purpose of offering asylum and refuge to those who need it. It is at least possible for these things to happen. And so it's inspiring and emotionally meaningful for me to be living, not just in a country where people can come together in a room like this for a campaign like this, not just to be living in a country where the media, for all some of their imperfections sometimes, are free, assertive and challenging when they feel they need to be and don't get locked up for it, but also to be in a country where their union representation come together to recognise the connections between their work and the work of others struggling for a free, independent and critically challenging media in other parts of the world and the impact that has on human liberty, human freedom and human dignity. in Gambia, these things are happening to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of journalists throughout the world, every year, every day. And the National Union of Journalists is committed to fighting for their right to work, for their right to give you information, and also for their right to be protected. And we ask everyone here, everyone that can, to, to join us in that, in the campaign, to make sure that everyone can get that information, to make sure that Journalists are protected throughout the world.